Let's open up TadApp. TadApp has a user guide which covers all the app's main features. If you have any questions, look through the user guide and hopefully it will answer them. Usually the first thing you want to do is pick some colors. I'll pick a black. Choose a different hue, like a red. We can choose grayscale to pick different shades of gray. There's also an advanced color picker to get more control over color selection. The lower slider controls the value. The outer edge of the circle is more chromatic and to the center is less chromatic. All the way around is for selecting a hue. So here's a medium chroma red. Drop the value down a bit and then add it to the tray. To close the color picker, you can click this, click a color, or click the color picker button. So I'll click a color to close it, and this shows what color I've selected. To delete a color, just hold down on it for a few seconds and confirm the delete. You can also blend between colors, so clicking on a gray would reduce the chroma of the currently selected color. If you want to add some chroma, you can click on the red. If you want to drop the value, you can click on the black. If you want to select a new color without having it blend, just tap in the rinse cup to clear the selection and choose a new color. Next, we'll import an image to use as a stencil guide. Here I have one all set up. I click Use to place it on the workspace. A Done and Revert button will appear showing that we are in image editing mode, which allows you to move and scale the reference image. Exit editing mode by clicking Done. If you need to reposition the image again, a new icon has appeared. This is the Edit Image button. Click on it and rescale and reposition the image, then click Done. Manipulating the workspace involves two fingers. You can drag and rotate. Notice you can't zoom because while tattooing, we can't zoom. A quick pinch zoom motion with the fingers will reset the workspace. There is an option to zoom that can be turned on with this little switch. So now you can pinch zoom and cheat. And again, a quick snap will reset the workspace. You also have the ability to lock the workspace to prevent any drag, rotate, and zoom actions. Just click the lock. One other feature is the alpha slider, which adjusts the opacity of the imported image. So while you're working, if the image is becoming too distracting, you can adjust the opacity of the image. You can also quickly turn the image on and off with the visibility button. So we have a color selected. Let's rinse and use a black. Let's choose a needle to start working with. There's liners, around, magnums, and soft edge magnums. The slider up here adjusts the machine's speed, which is currently set to very fast. To demonstrate what that means, I'll make a casual pass. You can see the spacing of the needle marks. Then I'll change the machine speed to fast and do another pass. The marks are spaced out a little more. Let's change to medium and then slow. So there's four different machine speed settings. There are also corner shading buttons. I'll select this one and you can see it creates an edge as if you're leaning the machine this way. The inner edge needles will be going in deeper than the outer edge needles. And here is the other direction. The corner shading buttons are just toggles so you can enable and disable them with a tap. This is a dilute slider. It helps simulate watered down inks. So with a slower hand speed, you can see that this is a fully saturated ink, dark and solid. I'll knock it down to 0.5 and you'll see it's reduced in intensity, a softer shade. It's almost like if you were dipping in water to dilute your inks or if you're using pre-mixed gray washes. So let's say you've laid out some inks. You can delete the entire project by clicking the trash button and that will clear the workspace and the ink tray. But let's say you want to keep your palette of colors and just clear the workspace. You can click this button here, which is the clear workspace button. Next, let's load a project. Clicking the folder icon will open a menu that shows all your saved projects. I'll select this one. While working, 
If you don't like something you did, you can do a two finger tap to undo. You get 20 undos. After 20, there's no more. The reason for that is I haven't figured out how to optimize the memory. More undos increase the memory usage and causes the app to bog down and lag. You can redo with three fingers. Be aware that since pinch zooming, rotating, and dragging uses two fingers, they will sometimes trigger an undo. If you want to do incremental saves, you can save your project under a different name. Click the folder icon, find your currently open project, and swipe left. There will be a duplicate button. Notice it's not on any of the other projects. It's only available for the currently open project. Swipe left and choose duplicate, and then type in a new name. I'll type in defeat version 2. It says it's been saved, and there it is in the menu. Close the menu. Now you'll be working on the newer project. Here I'll add some red. Notice that putting a full chroma red over the top of the other colors did not affect the intensity of the red at all. In a real life scenario, that red would not be that bright going over the top of other inks. So I'm going to undo that, then I'll select the multiply button. I would recommend using the multiply mode for most of your practice. Now you can see that the red is being blended over the top in a more realistic manner. So now I'm going to save, and let's check and make sure it worked. I'll load up the original. Notice the red is not there. Now I'll load up the last one, and you can see that all the red is there. And to delete a project, go to the load menu and swipe left, then click delete. It will ask if you're sure, and now the project is no longer saved. Granted, it is still here on the workspace, so you can trash it or load a new project. You can also bring in an image from your camera. So let's say you drew something on paper and you just want to get it into TADAP really quick. Then you can click the camera button and take a picture of it and load your image. You can share your artwork, so let's load that project again and click the share button. You can save, send it as a message, an email. It exports your art, the basic iPad share feature. The next feature of TADAP is the freehand sketching and inking mode. Click the pencil icon to bring up the workspace. Here you can practice your freehand sketching by drawing a design, inking over it, and then you can transfer the ink lines back over to the tattoo section. There's three layers, the pencil layer, the pen layer, and the reference image layer. Right now there is no reference image layer. The pencil layer is the currently selected layer, so I can adjust the opacity of that layer with the alpha slider. I can turn the layer on and off with the visibility button. I can then switch to the pen layer and turn it on and off with the visibility button. The alpha slider now affects the pen layer also. I'll turn the pencil layer off to see the pen layer better. I'll switch back to the pen layer, and now you can see the alpha slider affecting the opacity of that layer. I can transfer this layer over to the tattoo section to be used as a stencil guide by clicking the transfer image button here. The transfer image button will only transfer the pen layer. It won't transfer the pencil layer or the reference image layer. The idea is to do a sketch, ink it for your stencil, and then transfer it over. Now it's going to give me an alert because I already have a stencil image in the tattoo section. So if I choose replace, then this ink layer will replace that stencil image. You still have undos and redos. So if I turn the pencil layer back on, and I start doodling some more, I can change the brush size here, turn the alpha up, I can two finger undo, and three finger redo. There's also an eraser. With it selected, you can control the size of it here. And because the pencil button is selected, it will only affect the pencil layer. Same with the pen layer. Let's turn the pencil layer off, switch to the pen layer, and select the eraser. Now it only erases on the pen layer. And you can undo that. 
This button allows you to import a reference image. I'll just import the same one that I already made. Then you can resize and reposition just like in the tattoo section. While it is in image editing mode, you can adjust the opacity and the visibility. To exit image editing mode, you can either click the pencil or pen buttons or the done button. Now the image editing button will appear. Just like in the tattoo section, click it to reposition or resize the reference image. The workspace works the same as the tattoo section. You can rotate and drag the workspace with two fingers, as well as pinch zoom, as long as those features are enabled in the tattoo section. Here I've done a rough sketch and I'm going over it with pen lines to create the stencil. When I'm finished, I'll turn the pencil layer off so I can see how the pen layer looks. Then I will click the transfer image button to send it to the tattoo section. To return to the tattoo section, I'll click on the tattoo machine button. I can then reposition and resize the image in the tattoo section by clicking the edit image button. In the newer and bigger iPad Pros, you can slide the dock up and then drag an app over the workspace. I have created an art piece that I want to use as reference, and I have it in my Photos app, so I can drag it over my workspace and look at it while I'm working. I'll have to move it around sometimes to get to my ink colors. So those are the major features of TatApp. I created this app for the sole purpose of practicing tattoo techniques, but as you can see it can also be used for creating unique styles of art.